Oh, you got it's just a complete mat of zebra mussels. I'm Feline Zuam Yatton. I'm a Natural Environment Research Council funded ecologist at the University of Cambridge and I work specifically on non-native species in British freshwaters. Identification of the zebra mussel. The zebra mussel is a non-native species in British freshwaters native to the Ponto Caspian region and it arrived in Britain in the early 1820s. And it's very, very different from any of our native freshwater mussels. Um, firstly, it's smaller. It has these very charming black and white stripes, hence the name. And it attaches to hard substrates via a byssus thread, very much like our marine mussels. Our native mussels sit in the sediment and, and look very much like clams. And in a second, we can just look at our native mussels and see how they differ. Here are three species of our native mussels that I've managed to find in the same water body here and all of them have been affected by the zebra mussel. But as you can see they're much larger, they sit in the sediment and they can have this beautiful greeny coloration. And here we have the swollen river mussel, the duck mussel and the painter's mussel which is much much larger than these smaller zebra mussels. ecological impacts of the zebra mussel. As the zebra mussel is the only mussel in British fresh waters which is capable of attaching to hard substrates, it can significantly alter the habitats it invades. It also reaches incredibly high densities, much higher than our native bivalves, and so all the effects that bivalves have on the ecosystem are magnified when zebra mussels invade. Mussels clear the water of phytoplankton, and therefore when zebra mussels invade, they can outcompete other species which also feed on phytoplankton. Also, because they settle out on hard substrates and in many riverbeds, the major hard substrate is in fact the tips of our native mussels sticking out of the mud. They can come to encrust our native mussels quite significantly and have been known to lead to extinctions in places um, in the United States where they have a much higher diversity of mussels than we have here. That's not to say that our mussels here aren't severely impacted. Here we can see several hundred mussels, probably, settled out on one of our native unionids. And it's been shown that this can lead to starvation in our native mussels and, and consequently death. Also, by attaching to hard substrates, zebra mussels increase the complexity of, of, of the hard substrates available within the ecosystem and can therefore alter the balance of which species are present. So we tend to see, for example, an increase in the, the common water hog louse um, when zebra mussels invade. This can happen even if there isn't hard substrate available, if zebra mussel densities reach high enough, because they can just attach to one another and form dresses, clumps like this, or mussel reefs over soft sediment, thus completely altering the habitat that it invades. Industrial impacts of the zebra mussel. Aside from ecological impacts, zebra mussels also have significant industrial impacts. This is because in their larval stage they're microscopic and they float through the water column. So any pipes that are drawing water from an invested water body will have these larvae in it and the larvae can then settle out on the hard substrate in the, in the middle of the pipe, therefore blocking it. This can cost industries a lot of money to clear the pipes such that they can function as normal. In the United States, the estimated cost of this is in the hundreds of millions annually, and it's expected that the impacts here will be similar. Control of the zebra mussel. Currently, zebra mussels are controlled industrially using several different methods, although the favoured one is high dose of chlorine for an extended period of time. This is because zebra mussels can close up once they taste a poison in the water and can remain closed for up to two weeks. Therefore, continuous dosing is required, and this can have quite significant ecological impacts. However, new technologies are being researched 
um, which have the potential to be used both within industry and potentially even in the open water. One of these technologies is the BioBullet, which is being developed by David Aldridge at the University of Cambridge. And this involves encapsulating a toxin in a kind of tasty coating such that the muscles don't realise that they're taking in a toxin. And the coating then breaks down within the gut of the animal, thus killing it directly. This could potentially be used in the open environment if the particle size could be honed such that only zebra mussels were capable of ingesting it.